Hello class, uh, today I'll be talking about Load Runner. So in this exercise, or in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the three different types of Load Runner. So the first one I'm going to show you is what we call the Virtual User Generator. Let me make it bigger. Then the next thing I'm going to show you is what we call the controller. Then lastly, I'm going to show you how to use the analyzer. Okay. So, so far, you know, in class, we've, we've, we've described what performance testing is. So everyone knows performance testing is a measure of time, is a measure of how quick your website or your web application responds to users. So it's essentially a test between the client and the server. The client could be many things. The client could be a browser, right? It could be a web service call. It could be a web service API call. It could be a mobile app. It could be whatever. But the, the, what we're measuring in performance testing is the relationship or you know the, the discussion between the client and the server and we're measuring everything as a measure of time there are three things you guys have been measuring while you're doing your performance testing you know the first one we talk about a lot is load and I described to you guys in class what a load is so a load is essentially the number of users now, these are not real users, but they are virtual users. The next thing we're going to be measuring while we're doing your performance testing is what we call the response time. This is always measured in millisecond or seconds, and the response time is the time it takes for the server to respond back to a client's request. The last one that we're going to be talking about in this video is what I call the TPS. Well, not what I call, what the industry calls the TPS. And this is essentially the transaction per second. And what does that mean? We're essentially measuring a complete transaction between the client and the server. And a complete means a request goes to the server, a response comes back to the client. That's one complete transaction. So TPS is measuring how many of that can happen within one second. Okay? Alrighty. So enough talking. Let's actually get down to business. So to open up Load Runner, a lot of you have it installed already. Um, so you go into all programs. You go into HP Software. And you click on HP Load Runner. Now, if you notice, there are three different types in there. There's the analysis, there's the controller, and there's a virtual user generator. So we're going to use this first, the virtual user generator. So I'll click on that, and I will open it up. All right. So what you notice right away is HP Load Runner actually looks like HP QTP or HP UFT. I mean, it's not surprising. It's the same company. So the look and feel is the same. So the first thing we want to do here is I'm going to show you how to do a very simple um, recording. So you want to record um, a script. So I'm going to show you how to do a very simple record and playback. Okay. Now, so far in class, all our automation exercise has been on a web application, meaning we had to go through a browser to get to the application. For this exercise, I want to try something different. So I'm going to use a desktop application, and I'm going to use a server that also lives on my machine. So let's get that going. So the application we're trying to run some performance test on is a sample application given to us by HP. 
So I'm going to go into my samples and I have it there. So HP Load Runner samples and I have it there. Now if you notice we have the server and we have the desktop application. Now because this is a performance testing I will start the server right away. So I'll click on this to start the server. So once you get that kind of message you know the server has been started. Some of you might not get this message. All you, all you get is starting the WebTorus Apache server. That's also OK. But please don't close the server, because we need the server to be on. So just minimize the server. And right away, now that my server is running, I will go into my HP Load Runner, my samples. I'll now open up the desktop application. OK. I'm just going to do a quick test to make sure it's actually working fine. So I have an account that I've done before. So I'm going to log into that account. My username is Ty Ali, and my password is, I believe, password. OK, so I know the server is working, and I can log in, and I'm going to log out. All righty, so let's start it. Let's do a very simple record. So what I'll do is I'll say file new script and solution now just like QTP we have to select a protocol a protocol is you telling load runner what type of test you want to do in this example we want to do a very simple client and server so I'm going to choose my web HTTP slash HTML protocol I'll call this a demo. Um, I'll call it, uh, since today is Thursday, I'll call it Thursday Record uh, 1. OK, then I'll press Create. And I will have my project created with my script inside. So let's get going. I'll just push the Record button. And I have this um, options here. Um, I'll keep it very simple for now. It's asking me, what browser do you want to do your recording on? I'll select IE. And it's asking me, what's the name of the, the address you want to go to? Now, don't forget, guys, this is local to my machine. Don't forget that. So this is not a website external. This is actually local to my machine. So I will open up the website, make sure the address, copy the address, and I believe I, I have it here already. So this is where I want to go, and I'm going to start recording right away. So once you've started recording, um, HP Load Runner would actually open up the website for you, or you know, the, where you, whatever you want to go, because I, I have it open, so that's why. Um, it didn't open up, but it's already there. And you guys will notice right away that there is. Okay, I think it's still trying to open up the page. All right. OK. So you actually opened it up. So there we go. Now, once you start doing performance testing, there will be a time counting right here. Don't worry about that for now. I will explain later what that is. So I'm just going to record myself logging in. And I'm going to record myself signing off. OK. So once I'm done, I will close my browser. And I'll push the stop recording. OK. So just push close. And you have your script. So this is a simple uh, visual basic script for that uh, logging in and signing off. 
And if you guys look at this, you guys can basically tell what's going on. This is essentially saying, this is where you're going. Um, once you get there, there is, you're going to enter Thai Ali as the username. You're going to enter password as the password. And you click on the sign, well, sorry, the login button. Then I'll click on the sign off button. So it's a very simple script to read. Now, if you notice, we have some think time in here. What is that? Think time, because we're measuring time in performance testing, it's very important that the tool knows that you're thinking, meaning you're not doing anything. So think time tells the, the load runner that the user, after the user went to the website, for 36 seconds, the user did nothing. Then the user put in his username and password, and once it got in for about four seconds, the user did nothing. Right? Now, the question is, why do we need a think time? It's all up to you, and it's all up to the requirement. Some requirements say, make it a realistic test case, meaning use the website the same way a real user would use it. And real users always think. Right? We always think before we do something. So in your test case, you might need a think time or you might not need it. Okay? But if you were to remove a think time, how would you do that? There are two ways of doing it. You can remove it from here and say, I don't want no think time in my script. Or you can go into record, your records, where is it? Uh, I think it's your settings. Yeah, your runtime settings. So you double click on your runtime settings and in there you can specify whether load runner should ignore think time or you know not ignore it. So I'm trying to double click, double click on that runtime settings and you can see there's a section called think time. So I have it checked by default it says ignore think time. You know, if your test case, um, you need to have a think time in there, then you're going to click on this button here saying replay think time as recorded. You can make it random as well. You can say, hey, always make my think time random. You know, sometimes do it, sometimes don't do it. It all depends on your unique test case. All right. So now that we've gone through the script, everyone knows what it looks like, everyone can read it, and everyone knows what's going on. Let's play back. So to play back, I'll push the play button, and um, I'll play back. Okay. Now, you can see there was a playback, and in my playback, there was no GUI, right? You didn't, you didn't see Load Runner open up a GUI to replay everything back. Yes. The reason why we don't play back on the, on the website, on the GUI, is because we don't need to. This is a strictly performance testing. So this is just measuring the time between the client and the server. So we don't need the browser. We don't need to play back to do that measurement. So you notice when you're playing back in Load Runner, there is no GUI. So you can see that the, the transaction between the client and the server took 4 seconds and 291 millisecond. Okay? So that was, that was the response time between the client and the server. If you notice, when we play this back again, the, 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 the second time around, it should be a lot faster than the first time. So let's play back again. So just remember this. This is 4 seconds, 291 millisecond. Let's play back. In my playback, it was literally 1 second, 959 millisecond. Almost a quarter of the time it ran the first time. Why is that? This is because the server remembers, right? The server has a memory 
we call cache. So in the server's memory, the server knows, it remembers what I did the first time. So trying to do the same thing again, the second time, the server knows what to do a lot quicker. Okay? So that's why ne never run your performance test once and do your measurements. No. We, in fact, always run performance tests over a duration of time just because of this reason. Okay. So that's how you do a very simple record and playback. So the next feature I would like to show you is what we call a transaction. What is a transaction? A transaction is a business, is a complete business scenario. And that could mean many things, right? An example is this. Can you measure the time it takes to order a pizza? Maybe that, that's the business requirement. Now, this here is a transaction. To order a Peter, I might have to go through four different pages on the website. I may need to go through three different login pages to order a Peter, but the entire transaction is one, meaning measure the time it takes me to, from start to finish to order a Peter. And in fact, guys, always make sure that your load runner, you know, you always record everything in a transaction. It's easier to measure when you do that. Okay, so let me show you how to do a transaction. Now, in the last example I showed you guys, I did a very simple login and logout. In the next example I'm about to show you, I will make the login one transaction, and I will make the logout another transaction. So let's get going. So I'll go add new script. I'll call this Thursday underscore um, transaction. Okay. I'll press create. Just make sure I selected the right protocol. Then I'll start recording. So let me make sure I have it closed so you guys can actually see it open. Um, I'm going to click on the record button and it's going to ask me, yep, I want to go to the same place. I want to use IE and I'm going to say start recording. So same thing will happen. Yes, click on me. It's going to go open up. The server is running. So the client will go open up the client. Okay, all right. So now, before I start logging in, I'm gonna click on this icon here that says Start Transaction. So I'll click in there, I'll give it a name. So I'm gonna say, because it's my first transaction, I'm gonna say one, number one underscore login. I'll push the OK button. And now I have my first transaction started. So I'm gonna log in. Once I'm logged in, that's the end of that transaction. So how do you end a transaction? You end a transaction by clicking on this Insert End Transaction icon. So I'll click in there, and he's asking me, which transaction do you want to end? And I can say, I want to end the login transaction. The next one as well, Sign Off. So I'll click on this icon to say Start a Transaction. I'll call it Two and I'll call it Logout. I'll push the OK button. I'm going to carry on, so I'm going to sign off. I'll close the browser, and I'll say End My Logout Transaction. Once I'm done, I'll stop. So I'll close this, and I have two transactions. If you look at this script, you can notice that everyone knows what this is, you know the think time. This here is the beginning of my first transaction. And this here is the name of that transaction. 
the first transaction ended here as you can see that from the name and there was a think time and the second one started right away after the think time and the name of the second one is number two underscore logout and my second transaction finished here now you don't need to be recording all these things to do this you can easily you know the more guru you get the more good you get at this you can easily customize your script by just typing this out right you can just type in start transaction give it a name end transaction give it a name but that comes when you're very comfortable customizing your script let's play back if I push the playback let's see what will happen so my playback passed and you can see by scrolling through the log you can see how long each transaction took so my first transaction took 0 0.3 seconds the next transaction took 0 0.25 seconds which is roughly 0 0.3 as well so right now I've already separated my business use cases I can tell my company or my boss how long it takes for one user to log in into the um, application we're testing and how long it takes one user to log out from the application we're testing okay so that's what we call transactions without transaction there will only be just one time for both of them and to be very hard to separate now okay what is logging what is logout but with a transaction you can easily measure the business use case you know as one entity so I know now it takes me 0 0.3 okay so the next thing I'd like to show you guys is so they go back into the class notes so we've done a simple record I've showed you a transaction the next thing I'm going to show you is a checkpoint so we're going to show you I think that's a little bit too big <laughs> we can make it smaller so you guys can see it okay so I'm going to show you how to insert a checkpoint into your script there was a question in class somebody asked me why do we need a checkpoint because at this point we're not doing functional testing which is true the reason why we use checkpoint is only because you there are two different teams that do functional testing versus performance testing so you may have a bunch of QAs go ahead of you and do functional testing now they tell us everything is fine they certify the system is working properly and they now hire you to do the performance testing we add checkpoints sometimes because we don't trust <laughs> the result of the functional testing okay so you don't know 100% if the software is working properly so just to you know make yourself feel confident or assured you might need to put a checkpoint into your script as I said it's not very popular but I'll show you how to do it so you let's create a new test I'm gonna go add so the same solution I'm gonna say add a new script in this script make sure your protocol is selected I'm gonna call this Thursday um, checkpoint press create I'll get a new script and everyone knows the drill I will start recording so I'm using the same website but don't forget it's local to my machine I'll press record now say for example I want to record uh, I want to verify that a user can successfully log in and once you're logged in a welcome message is displayed to the user okay so I want to checkpoint I want to verify that a welcome message is displayed to the user so how do we do that so I'm logging now once I'm logged in my checkpoint is I want to verify that it shows welcome Thai Ali okay now how do we do that 
what you do is you highlight what you want to check. You highlight it. So I just want to check Welcome Thai Ali, okay? Or I can check the whole thing, doesn't matter. And I'll click on this. This here is a checkpoint. Now, because checkpoints are not very popular in performance testing, they only give us one. So it's called text checkpoint. So I can click on that, and right away is already taking the checkpoint. So don't forget, it's very different to QTP, meaning you have to highlight the, the text you want a checkpoint, then you click on the icon. So don't forget that. So once I'm done that already, I can sign off and I can close my um, I can close the browser and I can all right so you can press close there now right away if you go into your script you can see that this here is my checkpoint so it's saying the, the, the keyword for it is web reg find and it's telling me that they're looking for welcome Thai Ali to the web tours reservation pages. Let's play back. Okay, so it passed. So now we know for sure that this script logs in the user, and once it logs in the user, there's a welcome message that is displayed. We know that for sure. Let's play around with something. Let's change the checkpoint. So for example, if I change my checkpoint, this is my, yeah. Let me change something in the checkpoint <clears throat> just to prove to you guys that it's actually working. So I would say, check for Thai Ali 1. Now this should fail because the server would not return Thai Ali 1. But let's see. So if I run this, the script failed and it failed because it's telling you right here Thai Ali 1 was not found okay so that's how you put in a checkpoint into your script let me quickly fix it and um, so that we know that it is working okay so that's how you do a checkpoint the next thing I'd like to show you in load runner VUGen is what we call so that script passed, everyone can see that. Go back into your class notes. Um, so I've spoken about the think time already, and as I said, you can turn that on and off. So you decide, you know, whether you need the think time there or not. But the last one I'd like to show you is what we call a parameter. So I'd like to show you what we call a parameter. And by now, everyone knows why we have a parameter. So very quickly, I'll go back to that. Parameters are used, they're variables that we use in our script. And the idea behind a parameter is you replace a constant variable or a constant value with some kind of parameter. And the parameter could be connected to an Excel spreadsheet. It could be connected to a database. It could be connected to a data table. And it makes your script more efficient. Okay, so let's use parameters. Let me show you how to do that in Load Runner. So what we can do is I can use a parameter for my login name. So everyone knows I log in with Ty Ali as my username, and my password as well is also a username with the value password. Let's make it a parameter. Let's make the username and password a parameter. So how do you do that? Um, you right click on the value and you say show argument. Now QTP load runner is showing me that you have a you know a, a variable or you know a a, a a a field and this is the value. You have another one, this is the value, and this is my login button. Okay. So now to make Thai Ali a variable, I'll click on the ABC. I'll give the parameter a name, so I can say p underscore username. I'll click on the properties. And in here, I'll create a table. So I'll create a table. 
I'll just press OK. And right away, load runner has replaced because it knows my first value. So it knows for your variable p underscore username, your first value is Ty Ali. If I want to add more data, I can come in here and add more data. So I can add BZQA, right, as my um, as as more data for that parameter. Now we have different options here. You can say start from one, or you can say start from two, or you can actually even say be random or sequential. So random means pick any of them, right? It doesn't matter. Don't go from one, two, three. Just pick any of them. Sequential means start from one and walk your way down. So I'll pick sequential. We have two data for this variable. And I'll push the close button. Press OK. And is right away is replace the value with P underscore username. Let's try the same for password. So for password, I'll click on the ABC button. I'll give it a name. P underscore password. I'll click on the properties. I'll say create table. Press OK. And I have two. I have one right now, which is password. I can add another one. And I'll call it password 2. Okay. So same thing, sequential, and I'll press close. So this is how you bring in parameters to your script. Now, somebody asked me in class, how do I connect this to a database? It's very simple. It's very similar to UFT. All you have to do is if you have an Oracle database or an SQL Server database, all you have to do is click on the data wizard, and it goes to open up the ODBC. You can press Next, and I've shown you how to do this with UFT. So you should know exactly what to do here. Um, Sorry, I, I showed it to you in week six in database, yes. I showed you how to move data from one database to another database. So it's the same thing you're doing here. But in here, you're connecting to a database, but it's the same thing. All right, so we have two data in my username field. I'll press close, and I can press OK. And right away, my script as well, there's P username and P password. Let's run it. Let's see what happens. So if I run this script, it's saying my script passed. But you know that we have two datas in there. There are two datas, but we don't know if it ran twice or you only ran once. From the look of it, you only ran once. As you can see, it's saying iteration one started and it finished at one. So to see exactly what data was used, you will click on your runtime data. So in my runtime data, I can see that pass username was Ty Ali and password was password. So I know that my second data did not get used. Okay. Now how do you fix that? You go into your runtime settings, same thing, and you tell load runner how many times it should run. So we call that iterations. So if I say two iterations, now load runner is very smart. He knows that, OK, for the next iteration, I have to use the next data in the table. Let's try it out. So I've changed it to two. You can save it. To save, just click on the save. It's been saved already. You can run playback. And you can play back. Ah, and there's a failure. Why did it fail? So first of all, let's go into our runtime data, see what happened. So my runtime data, I know that BZQA and password2 was used. So we know it ran twice. Let's go into your, um, your log file. You can make it bigger. Say so my log file, I can see that it started the first one. See, it started the first one, and my checkpoint was successful. See, reg find successful. Now, the second time around, is using a different data, and I think what happened was my checkpoint failed because BZQA 
and password whatever it is would not give you welcome Thai Ali it will give you a different welcome message so that's why my checkpoint failed okay so um, this is how you do um, parameters so very quickly let's summarize before we round up I've showed you guys how to use the first part of load runner which we call the virtual user generator and we use this to basically create the script for one user so whatever it is you want to do most of the time is going to be a transaction we go into VUGen we call it VUGen in the industry we go into VUGen and we create the script for one user okay so this is the end of the VUGen class and everybody by now should be able to record playback everyone should be able to create a transaction everyone should be able to add a checkpoint into your script and everybody should be able to set up parameters in your script so that's the end of this class